Hey guys, welcome back. So, have you ever been in the market for a 9mm carbine that wouldn't aggravate or upset the likes of Diane Feinstein or even Davy Hogg? Well, me either. But there is a rifle out there that might pass their sniff test, and it's called the Henry Homestead Rifle. And yeah, this rifle, I saw them announce it, and when they did, I was pretty excited to check one out. I got to see it at a recent trade show and I wanted to get my hands on one because it reminds me of a fond memory I have as a kid, and that was the Marlin Camp Carbine. I always wanted one, never got one. When I became old enough to buy guns, I started taking an interest in different types of firearms and just kind of left the old Marlin Camp Carbine behind. Maybe I'll have to remedy that at some point in the future if I can find one somewhere, but that's not the point. The point is this rifle reminded me of that, and the Camp Carbine was basically a rifle that looks very much like this that fired nine millimeter. I think they had them in 45 as well, maybe other cartridges. But it's a neat rifle, nice, beautiful wood furniture, traditional wrist stock, safety back here, like shotgun, uh, aperture sight there. Just a beautiful rifle, kind of big, not super lightweight, very substantial feeling and a very neat gun. So we're gonna take a closer look at this. Again, the gun has traditional features. It's not going to trigger the anti-gunners. Henry had enough foresight, have the five round magazine in it. It comes with a five rounder and a 10 rounder, okay? No muzzle devices, no big, magazines hanging out underneath it. It's perfectly safe, could hurt nobody, no reason to ban it. So we're gonna talk about it today and have a little bit of fun with it. With that being said, let's do a little shooting. Got some 124 grain Federal 9 millimeter in here and Federal does supply the ammunition free of charge to the channel. I wanna thank them for doing that. They are a great company, been shooting that ammunition since I was a kid. And with that being said, let's go after that stump of shooting down there and see if we can beat her up a little bit with some 124 grain pills. Ah, oh, five rounds. That's all you need. According to Joaquin Jackson of the NRA, five rounds. Let's take a closer look. I might as well show you the 10 round magazine. It holds twice as many as the five rounder. <laughs> the gun does lock open on the last shot fired. And uh, yeah, so there you go. Five rounder fits flush. This one, not so much. Now, if you're easily triggered, you might wanna go ahead and fast forward so you don't see 10 rounds being fired. I can understand that can be very upsetting to some folks in 2023, and I don't wanna upset anybody. We're trying to be very inclusive here. <sighs> I love nine millimeter. I really do, such a cool cartridge. So let's take a look at some of the features of the Henry rifle. It is 100% American made, made in America for Americans. And it has American walnut furniture on it, which is absolutely beautiful wood. It has a receiver that's black anodized. I believe the barrel's blued at 16.37 inches in length. The gun weighs just a little over six and a half pounds. It has an aperture rear sight that sets forward. It's not a V-notch. The rear sight is adjustable for both elevation and windage. You have a little screw to adjust for windage. And then you can uh, rotate half turns the rear aperture to bring it up and down to get the uh, sight zeroed for elevation. Front sight is not adjustable. Nice wood forend. You'll notice it has nice texturing around the wrist of the stock, around the back of the stock. So it feels really good. It has nice texturing here. Coming out here, you can see the simple front blade. And yes, that is a threaded muzzle protector on there. So um, you do have a half by 28 thread out there. The gun takes apart much like a shotgun. So you have pins in here that hold the trigger group in and the stock on, and then you have another pin here that allows you to take the magazine well out. And from there, you can take the front handguard off, get the bolt out and all that stuff. And we'll show you that a little bit later in the video. The gun shoots really nice. It's a little bit punchy. Uh, it's, it's a blowback operated gun. It's a little bit unique in its design. Again, we'll talk about that when we get the gun apart so you can see how it functions. Trigger on it's very nice has a nice thick rubber butt pad on here because we all know nine millimeter will kick the snot out of you. And it is drilled and tapped on the top for a rail. Now on the website, I didn't find a rail in the box, but on the website it says that it uses a weaver rail. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why anybody still uses weaver rails. But um, anyway, so it, it's overall the fit and finish looks really, really good on the gun. Here are the two magazines side by side that it comes with. These are Henry Mark magazines. They are double stacked that, that come up to a single uh, feed position. They made, they're made out of polymer and they're straight mags. 
Let's take the gun apart because it's kind of an interesting design and how they got this thing to work. Again, it's just a simple blowback mechanism, but again, it's it's a little bit awkward in its design. And when I first saw it, I thought, wow, really another gas operated gun? It's not gas operated. So let's take this bad boy apart and talk about how that functioning works. It also does have, by the way, uh, a easily reversible or changeable, I should say, charging handle. You can move it from the right-hand side to the left-hand side if you're so inclined. So if you're left-handed shooter, and of course the safety being back here on the rear is very friendly to left-handed shooters. And then you do have a bolt lock right here that's present on both sides. Again, being very friendly to those left-handed shooters. Just pull that to the rear, push up on that, and it locks the bolt to the rear to release it, pull back, let her go. Okay, let's take this bad boy apart and show you how she functions. And um, yeah, it's not a military rifle, so it's not toolless, but the tools are very easy and simple to use. So I do have a good time shooting the gun. Now the magazines, I don't know what they cost or what the availability looks like. It would be awfully nice if I could put an extendo in here and do uh, some other modifications to it. But in light of that, pop off 10 rounds here. Huh, pretty nice, but let's see if we can make a few changes. Oh, ho, ho, check that out. Now this is probably gonna trigger some of you, but now I have a happy stick in there, a Glock magazine. So yes, it does take Glock mags. The conversion magazine well does come in the box with the rifle. And on the end, I have a flash hider. Oh no, let's do some shooting now. Locks open, last shot fired with the Glock magazines. With the Henry magazine, you have a magazine release that's actually in front, which is a little bit weird. With the Glock magazine, you have a release right here. Now on the other side, for left-handed shooters, the release in the front would be more friendly to left-handed shooters. You don't have the ability to release the magazine from the right-hand side of the rifle, so that'd be a little bit awkward for left-handed shooters. But you can use any type of Glock magazine, drum, happy sticks, 15 rounders, 17 rounders, whatever. So that's pretty darn nice the half by 28 thread on it. You can also put a suppressor on there. So do you think Diane Feinstein or Davy Hogg would consider this to be an assault weapon? I hope so. All right, so let's take her apart. First thing you always wanna do when you take a firearm apart is to make sure that the weapon is empty. Now I have removed the magazine. You can see the magazine's not in the weapon. I'm gonna pull the bolt to the rear, check that chamber, make sure there's nothing in there and it's clear. So now I'm just gonna leave it on safe and start taking it apart. So you're gonna need a small, Allen wrench and a punch to get it completely apart for field maintenance. Now you have three pins on the gun. These two hold the trigger group and stock to the receiver. This pin holds the magazine well in. You need to remove all of this to get the bolt out of the gun. And to fully disassemble it, you will need to take the handguard off and that's what the uh, tool, the uh, Allen wrench would be for. So let's go ahead and start the disassembly process. I'm just gonna tap this rear pin out and you can do this in no particular order. They are not captive and they can be a little tight as you can see. Get out of there. All right, all the pins are the same so you don't have to worry about keeping them in any particular order either. And push this pin out. Nope, it wants to be challenging so we will use adequate amounts of force to get that pin out. All right, so with that second pin out, now you can push down on the trigger group and the stock, you just kind of wiggle it and it'll come apart. Once you put a little bit of lube on this, these um, areas where it slides into the receiver, it'll come apart much more easily. Now you can easily get to the trigger group and clean it, okay? Now we're gonna take this third pin out. Let's go ahead and elevate that just a wee bit. third pin out and now the magazine well comes out and then with that goes the uh, it comes out with the ejector on it now you see the bolt inside of there but before we take that out I'm gonna take the handguard off so you have this little screw right there on the front of the handguard you're gonna want to loosen that and take it out now it's also worth mentioning we got this gun out of the box I wanted to take the thread protector off all right, there's that 
interesting system I want to talk about. But before I talk about that, let's talk about this thread protector. So if you look at this thread protector, you're going to see shiny spots and flat spots on it. And that's because I had to use a pair of pliers to get it off. That sucker was on there. And to get it off, we applied a lot of force, boogered up that muzzle nut protector, that thread protector. And what it turned out to be was copious amounts of Loctite being applied to the threads. I would ask Henry to quit doing that. Simply put an O-ring on there. That'll give it enough tension to keep it from walking off when people are shooting it without uh, suppressors. I understand that they probably did that because very few people actually own suppressors. One or two percent of the gun owners out there will even buy a suppressor. So to keep it from walking off, they put that on there. But, you know, if you want to use a suppressor, the bad thing is, is you kind of have to booger it up if you don't have the proper tools to get it off. And we don't have the proper tools in the shack. So uh, I'm going to try to get a, another muzzle device on there so I can have it that isn't all boogered up. But if you get it, just be super careful about getting it off and then wipe away that Loctite and you can pick up an O-ring at a hardware store or something like that to keep it from walking off. Okay, so now let's talk about taking the bolt out of the gun. Now, first of all, you can just pull the charging handle out. It just has a simple detent. And if you want to, you can just put it in on the other side and that's how you get the left hand charging. All right, so this looks like a shotgun, if you will. These are like action arms that come back and you can see they move with the bolt. Your recoil spring is right here with the guide rod that's pinned to this little block that's screwed to the barrel in the front. And so you can see how that operates. Now you might think that this was a gas block and this was a gas piston, like a Mini 14 or something like that. That's not what this is. It's a simple blowback. This is just added weight underneath the barrel. I assume that they did that so the bolt could be smaller that was inside the receiver to keep the receiver shorter. They added that weight out underneath the handguard, moving it forward so they could shorten that action. So it makes sense why they did that. Just kind of an interesting thing. So now to take it apart, you have these two action arms. They're not held in by any screws or pins. But what you want to do is kind of push back on the weight here and then push forward on the bolt and you'll see how those those little arms come out of their grooved slots on either side of the weight and once you do that you can lift up on them and then you can just kind of wiggle them out and they lock into that bolt this one on this side is always a little bit more difficult to get out than the other one but they lock into the bolt with these two little square things that protrude downward, those will set into the bolt. And that's how it gets bite on the bolt so it can move it back and forth. Now, once you have that out, you can just lift your bolt out of the gun like that. And that's just a symbol. If you want to take any of this other stuff apart, you're going to have to get into pushing pins out and things like that. And it's not really necessary. You can clean this with gun scrubber and wipe it down with oil and it'll be just fine. So that's fully disassembled for field maintenance. So tools, a little bit of practice, not overly difficult, and you shouldn't booger up the gun taking it apart. All right, so shooting the gun, it's been functioning just fine. The gun does have a little bit of recoil to it, as most blowback 9 millimeters do, but it's not anything that even requires a rubber butt pad, but you have one just in case. The gun is a little bit salty. It's a bit expensive. $928 is full MSRP. You could probably expect to pay a little bit less than that once they become commonly available online. They are out there circulating, and people are starting to pick them up. Uh, is the quality good? Absolutely. Uh, Henry's a good company. If you ever have a problem, no questions asked, they'll, they'll, they'll take care of it. I fully expect them to replace that little um, thread protector for me. They've, they've done really good jobs in the past. Even if you damage your finish, they'll refinish your gun for you. So it's, it's a really good company. I do like Henry as a company and the management and the ownership of the company. So if you're looking for 9mm carbines, a little bit out of the norm, isn't AR-15 based or something else, you want something that's a little bit more conventional looking like this, if you're wanting to reminisce like I was over the Camp Carbine from Marlin, this would be a good option for you. Again, the only hurdle to that is the rather high price, but it's a beautiful rifle. It's kind of an heirloom type rifle with the beautiful uh, American walnut furniture and stuff on it. Something you can hand down to your kids if you so desire. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. There's a link in the video description below. Also, right here on YouTube, you've got the little join button and thank you button underneath the video player you're watching right now. You can mash either one of those buttons and help support us right here on YouTube in the age of demonetization. And last but not least, please swing by and check out Copper Custom. Thank you for 15 years of support and we'll talk to you guys soon.